Double, double. How'd you break your neck? Well, I was trying to look at my butthole. You don't know what they be doing on the island. You don't know. Jeffrey Epstein could have wanted a piece of you, baby. Hold on a f***ing minute. You have a 13-year-old daughter and you're 72? Yeah. That is such old white people shit. How? <laughs> How? How did that happen? Okay, go ahead. Do you want to intro the show this time? No. Okay. Alan, welcome to another episode of Your Own Podcast, The Worst Podcast. Um, Alan, there's a theme I want to ask you about today that I think will be very relevant with our guest. You know I'm not into themes. I want to talk to you about delusion. How much is delusion a part of your life? Uh, oh. I wouldn't put it in those terms, but let's say I weigh 225 now. When I weighed 305, when I was morbidly obese— my image of myself was the way I am now at 225. Okay. At 225, my image of myself is like 185. Okay. Like, the thing is, I really envy people who are morbidly obese and are good with it. I don't want to fat shame anybody else. Mm -hmm. But I, yeah, I, I shot this little movie, and then some guy wanted to make it into a little web series, and I looked at it, and I was like... I'm disgusted. Mm -hmm. I couldn't believe I walked around like that. Okay. And it's only because I had lost like 80 pounds since then that I said, okay, you can put it into the world. Are you proud of yourself? <clears throat> pride, you know, <laughs> pride is a hard emotion. I'm, you know, I can be proud of my daughter, but no, I have nothing to be proud of. That's what I would say. Like, I don't really <laughs> understand that word. If the parade was the not ashamed of yourself parade, I would go to that one. But are you proud of yourself? I'm not referring to, you know, all I'm all for the gay pride parade. I'm just saying if it was another pride, just like people who are proud. Just proud of yourself proud parade. Proud of yourself parade. <laughs> I would be like, is there a little extra side stage where the not exactly ashamed of yourself people are gathering? Because I'll be fine with that. I want you to guess who our guest is today. Um, I am going to be completely honest. You're not going to know who this person is right. whatsoever. But here are some clues. They're a drag artist. Are you familiar with any drag queens? Um, yeah. I think my daughter watches one of those okay. shows. And, you know, whatever. Like, who didn't go to El Convento Rico once upon a time? <laughs> I've, I've gone. It's not my chosen form of entertainment. Okay. But well, okay, so I am willing to bet that your daughter knows who this person is. Okay, well, if my capacity. daughter knows who this person is, that'll be so cool for me. Not that many things that I do can I tell her, and she'll go, that's cool. Mm -hmm. But every once in a while, something I'll be like, yeah, honey, I know that guy. And then she'll be impressed. And <laughs> who doesn't want to impress their daughter? I know. I'm really hoping that we can like really impress your daughter with okay. this one. Final clue. Has he been in any Russ Meyer films? No. It's not Divine. No. Oh, if we got Divine, that'd be amazing. I'm intimidated now by this guest, I will tell you. Okay. But that might be okay. Well, be they are a winner as well. They're a winner. A winner, yeah. Did they win Drag Queen Race of Canada? They did. They did. Okay. Um, okay, I'm going to so reveal his, to you. what's their name? First of all, what's their pronoun? So we're going to go with she, her for now. I okay. asked her and she said it's just she pretty much all the time at this okay. point. Um, her name is Priyanka. Priyanka. She is a drag queen, a pop star, actor, winner of Canada's Drag Race, wow. and former kids TV host. I'm going to go bring her in. Okay. Everybody, before you listen to this, should know that we say bad words. Um, I think you mean swear words. I swear. I can't help it. But I don't say the worst ones. You do say um, the worst one at one point. Only because I was imitating somebody. Um, we touch on sensitive topics. I literally don't know what that means. But if you're worried about sensitive topics, you probably do know what it means. Uh, don't listen around kids. Um, yeah, that's that just goes for all podcasts. Use your discretion. Uh, I don't know. Sorry if it's bad. In, 
I don't understand these warnings. I'm Alan Zweig. This is the worst podcast who hired the oldest host ever to start podcasting. Wow, this is so great. Oh, there's headphones, of course, of course. You don't need the uh, things. Okay. I can hear you. I can see you. I believe in you. <laughs> How do I begin? Uh, I am Alan. Welcome, Priyanka, to the studio for the worst podcast you've ever been on. Tell me why this is the worst one. Well, because I don't know what I'm doing. That's the first thing. Really? Yeah, no clue what That's I'm crazy. doing. That's crazy. And also— Where would you grow up? I grew up in Toronto. What about you? Where Whitby. You? Whitby. Whitby, Ontario. Oh, my God. I made a film once where my friend uh, Justin Trudeau. was from Ajax, and Justin he Trudeau. was— no. Justin Small, he was brutal about how fast he wanted to get out of Ajax. But, really? But I don't know anything about Whitby. I don't mind Whitby. Which is worse, White Ajax B. or Whitby? Or I think Whitby because Ajax has, Ajax has more brown people, so like that's nice. In Whitby, I was the only brown person on my street. I came home crying one time. I think it was like four. I was like, Mom, <laughs> somebody called me brown. And she was like, you are brown. And I had literally had an epiphany. I like looked at my hands like, oh, what? Did they literally say brown or did they use? They're being mean. They're using an epithet. They're being rude and bullying me for being brown. But now I bully them. Now yeah. I bully all white people. So that's why I'm here today to bully you. Okay. Well, if you do a good job. You let me know. I'll accept it. Oh, thank you. Anyway, why do you think it's called the worst? I think it's called the worst podcast because you are the worst person Ever, I'm assuming. Um, Why else would you host something like this? It's funny you say about the worst person ever because I had a thought today. Tell me. Well, every once in a while, yeah, I'm talking to somebody and then I come back to my friend and I go, you know, that person's not so bad. And they go like, what, what happened there? Oh, you hate that person. And I say, well, actually, they said something nice about one of my films. Aww. And then I forgive them. So anyway, well, earlier I was thinking... What if Jeffrey Epstein had said something nice about one of my films? What would you do? My, I think I would still condemn him. But I'd have a slight—I wouldn't condemn him quite so harshly. So in that way, maybe I'm the worst person. Well, I guess like I guess it depends. Like You should condemn Jeffrey Epstein, period, because you, know, you don't want to go on the island. No, I don't want my daughter to go on the island for or sure. Or you. You don't know what they'd be doing on the island. You don't know. Jeffrey Epstein could have wanted a piece of you, baby. So, okay, I'm the worst person. You know what? I, I don't well, mind. I don't know if you are. I don't know if you are. What would but be— I'll, I'll find out. In what way could I prove to you that I'm the worst person? Some people are self-proclaimed the worst, right? They, like, hate themselves because, like, we all hate ourselves, apparently. So if that's where you want to expect, I'm the worst person ever, and this is my brand, I am ready for it. No, I don't hate myself. Loving myself is is a stretch, but— I have experienced self-loathing, mm. but also that's a really nice word I like. I love loathing. It's like in the Grinch. You know what? When I hate a person, mm -hmm. that's one thing. When I hate myself, I don't really hate myself, but I do treat myself badly. Why? I don't know. Like, <sighs> Priyanka, you want to be my therapist? Yeah, I do, actually. Okay, well. But I also feel like, are you bad to yourself if... You have a podcast that you're doing to entertain well, people? a lot of this is in the past. That's nice. I mean, but no, I was definitely bad to myself. I'm fat now, but I got way fatter, and that was just, I smoked, and I didn't, you know, stayed up all night, and I hated whatever. You lived a good life. Yeah. <laughs> but uh, what about, uh, do you hate anybody? Oh, yeah. Hating is, they always say hate is such a strong word. But sometimes you just hate people. Like, I don't know what to say. Like, I just feel like it's good for you to do the work to, like, come to, you know, peace with yourself and understand what you want to tolerate for your life. And if that causes you to hate someone because they've wronged you or done something wrong or killed somebody that, you know, whatever the case is, it, is, it could be extreme, it could be small, then, like, you're allowed to hate people. Why not? So there are definitely people that I hate because people show their dark side and you're like, I can't unsee it. Okay, I'm not a therapist. I'm not playing one. But I will say this about hate. Forgiving is for you, 
not for them. Forgiving if, is for you, not for them, right? Because if you don't forgive somebody, if mm-hmm. you carry around the grudge, then it's hurting you. They don't know that you're hating them. They're not suffering from your hate. You're the one that's suffering because it's a it's an unpleasant feeling, unless it's pleasant. I guess sometimes it could be fun to hate somebody. I have become more forgiving with age because I realize how old you? that I was. Oh, am I, am I allowed to ask how old you are? Yeah, yeah, I'll tell you. It's on Google, so I'm I can't lie. really old. How is really old? I'm seventy two. Do you think that's really old? Yeah, I'm. Yeah, it's funny when you asked, I was like, oh. Sometimes I say it with pride, and then sometimes when I'm with somebody very young, I'm like, oh, my God, how can you even talk to a 72-year-old? Right. But, like, have you ever—do you know any 72-year-olds? Yeah, my grandfather. Your grandfather, okay. I find that, like, if you are that old and you have this much energy, that's iconic. That's all I can ask well, for, Well, you don't energy. know if I have energy. I'm just twitching and While you're on this microphone like, talking a lot of shit, I think that's a lot of energy. The Worst Podcast is brought to you by AG1. AG1 is a foundational nutrition supplement that delivers daily nutrients and gut health support and is backed by multiple research studies, so you can trust what you're putting in your body. Katie, tell me about how you use AG1. I use it in a smoothie. Every single morning, I have a recipe of Greek yogurt, a little packet of AG1 or the scoop, a little droplet of the D3K2. And then uh, usually like half juice and half water. Okay. What is the one thing that has changed in your body that you can attribute to AG1? I would say I definitely have felt more energy over the last, like, I guess it's been six months now. I'm going to put in a word for gut health. Doing a show like this, you've got to trust your gut. And so AG1 is going to help with that. And... uh, It's going to help with all kinds of other things. Your gut is very important. I wish I had not ignored my gut all these years. AG1 conducted a study with key markers of high-quality research. So it's got third-party, double-blind, and placebo-controlled studies. And they're posting the results online from their studies. So at 30 days, 80% of the people in the research study noticed less gas and bloating. And at 90 days, 97% of the people felt their digestion had improved. If I had to recommend one product to support whole body health, it's AG1. And that's why I'm excited to welcome them as a new partner. It's easy and satisfying to start your journey with AG1. Try AG1 and get a free one-year supply of vitamin D3K2 and five free AG1 travel packs with your first purchase at drinkag1.com slash the worst. That's drinkag1.com slash the worst. Check it out. Okay, so what's the worst thing anybody's ever said to you? The worst thing someone's ever said to me was... I had an aunt one time said, who would ever put this ugly boy on TV? That was triggering. That was mean. Um, But then I used it as my uh, gasolina to fuel the fire, to then become a TV host. And then one time I was dating this boy, and he said that when I started drag, he became unattracted to me. Even though I'm not wearing drag in the bedroom, I'm not walking around in drag like day to day at the grocery store, it's performance art for me. Right. He's like, I'm unattracted to you. That was that was pretty awful. But you're okay, just Ask, t- you're, say it, say you're very attractive in drag. Thank I, you. Like you I mean would. you're you yeah, like like Who wouldn't? I'm not trying to be uncharitable, but sometimes drag is an extremely exaggerated thing yes. with with big makeup and et cetera. It's gaudy on purpose, I yes, assume. It is, it is, it is, it is, it is. You know it's crazy though, the more feminine you do paint like you know everything's a little smaller i'm wearing blonde hair da, da, da. it like almost scares people even more because they're like what does this mean does it mean that i'm into something that i shouldn't be? oh i see whereas like if it's a clown it's a clown so i'm trying to think do i have an answer to that what's i was worth about thing? to ask you what's the worst thing anybody ever said to me oh I, that well Jeffrey yeah, no that's not the worst thing but you know i met this girl online okay you're dating and we're talking not, I was, sure, I dated in my life. Okay. I met this girl online. We talked. Uh-huh. We had tremendous chemistry. Okay. We you met, had tremendous we, chemistry texting, uh, texting and emailing? We met at a bar. Mailing. We still had chemistry. 
We went to her house. She, for exercise, had a stripper pole. Cool. In her house. We made out, kind of. Wait, 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 wait. wait. How do you kind of make out with somebody? Well, we didn't. We didn't, whatever. Like, did we you got, use tongue or not tongue? Let's say we went to second base. I don't know. What's, what is Isn't second, second base? Is second base a boob touch? Uh, maybe. Anyway, we didn't have sex. The next day, we were supposed to get together, and she called it off. Three years later. What? Three years later, I ran into a friend of hers, and they said, I know why, uh, what's so her name, so. didn't want to go out with you anymore. Why? And in order to just... Like, save myself the pain of it. I said, why? Because I was too fat? And she said, yeah. <gasps> kind of like, like, yeah, you got it. And I was like, oh, hey, that's like, I need to go to the therapist on Tuesday. To I was going to say, you got to book an appointment because she's about to get deep in here. The minute this is over, first of all, we'll take a picture. Yes, please. And then I'll text my daughter yes, and her say, her. Do you know Priyanka? And then if she How says... How old's your daughter? Well, this, I'm 72. My daughter's 13. And I'm pretty sure if she watched... Hold on a fucking minute. Is that the worst? You have a 13-year-old daughter and you're 72? Yeah. That is such old white people shit. How? <laughs> How? How did that happen? I wanted kids my whole life, but nobody would have them with me. <gasps> and then I met somebody who would, and they were 20 years younger than me, and we had a kid, and... Was it in love or was it just like, let's oh, have no, a kid? Oh, no, it was love. It was love. Is it still Even, love? No. <gasps> but whatever. We're good. We're very good. We love our daughter. We get along. This is amazing. You're fascinating. I don't know about that just because I'm an old, old, old daddy. An old dad. Old daddy. But anyway, the thing is, I don't impress my daughter very often, but I have a feeling today she's going to be impressed. Today's the day. I'm pretty sure her and her mother watch drag race. Canada's Drag yes. Race or something. I hope so. You didn't watch it. No. You hate gay people. I'm just joking, you motherfucker. I would never say that. No, I don't I don't hate gay people. That, I know. Uh, that would be the worst thing. If I did, I wouldn't admit it. Katie's not saying anything because she likes it. I'll just tell you one thing. When you said I'm the worst person ever, that girl there was Happy like almost it. like Thank peeing God her pants. Someone said it. Yeah, <laughs> finally somebody Jeez. said it. Okay, so she told me some things that you might have an attitude about. Okay, yeah, I love this. No new friends. Yes, yes. You don't have, are you saying? Well, I have a song called No New Friends. Ah. So that's where this all kind of comes from. Right. And what happened was, is I really wanted to do a song that was a happy song. But then when I was in the writing session, I ended up being this like trauma rock and roll gangster song by accident I wanted to make like a fun like love yourself but then it ended up being like yeah uh, uh yeah right, because you know because that's more interesting let's face it that's yeah, the, it's you real. ask me why the show is called the worst it's because if you run into your friend and they go you say how are you and they go I'm great I've never been better you are like man you know what fuck off but if yeah, they say true. if they say oh, I am kind of depressed uh, okay you try to cheer them up but I don't know. You can't cheer somebody down, although I guess I People would try. Ch- that's the thing. That's yeah. funny that you said that. You are a smart guy. You're a smart guy. I, because that's basically what the song's about. It's like, listen, you can't be using somebody's happiness and success as your issue. Just because someone is thriving, it doesn't mean that you got to hold the mirror up. You could be happier for somebody and also be happy for yourself, too. So that's where no new friends comes from because it's like you got to be weary of the new people that you let into your life. All the time, not just when you win drag, because is it a genuine connection of actual friendship that this person likes you for, or are they trying to get something out of you? I see. Yeah, see, and sometimes I, you don't know. I will admit, in the category of worst, do you ever experience Schadenfreude? Do you, do Who's you, that? Schadenfreude. It's the next we're, next <laughs> next year's winner on Canada's Drag Race. <laughs> no, Schadenfreude <laughs> is when you. Uh, get name. pleasure from the pain of others. Do you ever experience that? That's a thing? Yeah. That's German. It's a German word, but it's a that's thing. That's kind of crazy because that's a thing in this world. Oh, yeah. Yeah, people no, wonder, like which is if, why people are so addicted to true crime podcasts and TikTok trauma stories. It's like, oh, someone is doing bad. Well, I think this. part of it is also you have pain, you have disappointment, you have misery. 
you don't want to hear too much about other people's joy. It's more fun to hear about maybe you feel less alone or maybe you're an actual. See, my schadenfreude, I'm not sure that it isn't because I'm a basically ungenerous person who doesn't want anybody else to be happy. There might be some truth to that, but when you said something about don't look at the joy of other people's success, like I, I want my friends to be successful sometimes okay but not all the not time. not all the time and not so much that they'll make me feel bad about my lack of success i want them to be just a little less successful than me i'm dead you don't mean that you don't mean that do you mean that well a little bit yeah cuz and i think also the major misconception is how, what do you perceive as success Right, that's true. everyone sees it differently, and that's where the main issue is. Well, do you like, you know, if your friend told you that, oh, by the way, my father died and he left me $100 million, and I'm going to buy, like, a cottage in Muskoka with 100 rooms and all that, would you go, oh, I'm happy for you? Yeah. Really? Not me. Really? Well, depends who it was, I suppose. But, yeah, not generally. You have an opinion about delusion? Oh. Or there's that, that's something. This is a Katie. I think delusion. Delusion is the secret ingredient to success. Ah. Oh. Okay. You used to be like, okay, if you get discovered, you could be a star. But nowadays, anybody can be a fucking star. So now I just say what I am and what I do, and then good things come. Like, yeah, I'm a pop star. I'm a dancer. I'm a this. I'm a that. But, like, I didn't go to school for dance. I didn't go to school to be a drag queen. I didn't go to school to be a pop star. I didn't get discovered. I discovered my damn self. Okay, but you're saying That's a, you're saying it's, like, a good thing. I think it's fucking great. No, I don't think it's a good thing. You but, don't? Well. You're the one who had a kid at 70. That's delusional. <laughs> okay. I'm not going to come back after <laughs> that. Imagine you you were like, and you're really a man. I'm like, okay. I have nothing against everybody. What do you think about delusion? I think that delusion is something you need to get through your life, basically. Okay, yeah, I agree. Like, like... Because reality sometimes because, can be... But also, you have no choice. There is no way for any of us to know who we actually are. Because our subconscious is completely unavailable to us. Ooh, so I love that. So, you'll probably like this. One of my favorite quotes. 99% of everything we do is for show. We're doing it for show, to show people that we're a certain way. And who are we mostly showing? Ourselves. Ourselves. Oh, my God, I love that. I was just saying this to somebody somewhere. It's always the loudest person in the room who's the most hurt because it's true. It's funny. You know what? I'm making this film about suicide, Mm -hmm. and one of the people that inspired it is my friend who killed himself. Mm. So. When was this? Like 2019. 2019. So. Damn. My friend was very tough. Okay. He was so tough, he had a knife in his boot, mm-hmm. and he would walk into the tough parts of town, okay. almost like invited to be attacked so he could defend himself. Interesting. When I said that to one of the people in my film, who's the mother of somebody who killed himself, she said, he was in so much pain. Yeah. That's what she said. She didn't say how tough wow. she was like only somebody in a lot of pain would do something like that oh. that's how much pain he was in that he was inviting somebody to hurt him isn't that fucking crazy it is fucking crazy Holy so shit. that's and and that's a subconscious act on your friend's side like right yeah and then the, the wow. other delusion is I thought my friend was tough, but he wasn't. Mm -hmm. He was full of pain, Mm -hmm. and he was just fronting. I guess that's the word. Yeah, I love that. All fronting. All fronting, yeah. Katie would like you to insult me a couple more times, but pick a number between 1 and 47. 3 is my favorite number. 3. Tell me about the worst time you were late for something. I have dreams about this all the fucking time. And it's always like high stakes, the dreams. Uh, okay, late, 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 late. It would be, it would be my dream story. Okay, tell I me a, a dream. I'm performing with, you. do you know who Beyonce is? Yeah, yes. Okay. Well, I don't know what you listen to, like I'm, John yeah, Wayne and stuff. I am 72, is but John again, I have actor? a third, yeah. Is John Wayne an actor or a singer? John Wayne. 
the old John Wayne actor. Is there a new one? Yeah, there is, I think. A, a revamp? One. No, I think there's somebody named John Wayne. Anyway, whatever. Amy, it's Lady You're talking song. about old John Wayne. He's Anyways, dead. okay, so I, have a, I keep having this reoccurring dream that I am going to be performing with Beyonce. Yeah. And I just can't make it to the stage. Everything keeps going wrong. Everything is falling apart. Everything sucks. And that's that. But that wouldn't happen. No, I would be on time early. You'd be there before Dusted her. and ready to go. Okay. Bent over for Jay-Z. Pick a number. Pick a number. Okay, let's do 30. 30. Hmm. 30. What is the worst word in the English language? The worst word in the English language is... Republican. Oh. You like that one? I th- I, th- I was thinking of another one. But what were you thinking, cunt? Yeah. I love that word. We say it more in like a positive way. Like, oh my God, you look so cunt right now. Really? Yeah, what? like in, in like the drag community, in the gay community. Like it's what a positive thing. It's it just means like you're like... fucking killing it. Like you look so fucking cunt. Okay. So that, yeah. I don't, yeah. I'm so going like... to try that on my girlfriend tonight. <laughs> Ah, imagine <laughs> say it out of nowhere no contact like, baby. honey you look so cunt <laughs> I'm hoping the answer to this is a positive answer even though it's called the, the worst I was going to say whoa plot twist how's your parents with you being a drag queen how are they with that my mom right from the beginning when I came out as gay pre-drag she was like, don't feel like you have to explain yourself to anyone. I support you no matter what. That was the first chapter. Then drag, she was like, oh my God, congratulations. I'm here to support you. She came to watch a couple shows. It wasn't until I competed on Drag Race and we did some interviews together. She'd be like, yeah, when I first saw Mark do drag, I was hoping that it was just a phase because he looked so ugly in drag. And I was like, mom, what? But what's interesting is that like she just didn't want to like put that on me. She wanted me just to go have my journey and go try. And up to now, she comes to all my shows and she's very, very supportive. My dad, so growing up West Indian is a very interesting upbringing because the most, I mean, I'm, I'm not West Indian, a lot of old school people like yourself are like this where something will happen and no one actually has the proper tools to communicate properly. So these big things would happen, like family death or divorces or whatever situation. And then like one day it feels like it's the biggest thing in the world and the next day everyone's like, breakfast is ready. Right. I'm like, it never happened. Right, yeah. And so that was what my relationship with my dad was. It was There was not a lot of like communication between us and even with my mom still, but I was a mama's boy so I didn't really see it that, that way. When I had to tell my dad that I was gay. We waited years. When I told my mom, years went by. She's like, let's not tell dad yet. You know, we were scared of what dad was going to say. And then when it was like drag races coming out, I quit my job to do drag race and like I'm going to be on billboards everywhere. Like dad's going to hear my voice. That He's going to see a wig, but he'll hear that voice and know that it's me eventually. Uh, my mom told him I wasn't even in the room. And she said that it was kind of just like awkward because he was like, okay. We should go buy paint now. You know, like, and I was like, yeah. let's go, like, to Canadian Tire and buy some paint. And nowadays, that's the years ago, nowadays, he still hasn't seen me do drag yet. I haven't f- um, formally invited him. Uh, but this is the year he will see me do drag for the first time in person. I'm sure he's seen photos. I'm sure he sees, you know, he's on Facebook and all that stuff. I'm sure he's seen. Um, but this will be the first time. So it's not that he's not supportive. It's just that he... Well, it I, sounds I like pretty good. It is really... Yeah, I would say it's more I of a positive say, realm. Yeah, it would, that's, that could be a lot worse. I'm also giving him the time as a parent to like... I mean, my parents didn't... My mother never got over that I didn't go to law school. I really? should I should have gone and on drag show. Yeah, I know. Freak her out and then go, okay, I'm a boy again, but I'm not going to law school. And then she would have been like, oh, you're a prettier girl. Mm, Yeah. (laughs) Anyway, um, uh, how we doing, Katie? Um, I think we have so much good stuff. Um, One question that I feel like you should ask Priyanka is... What worst questions do you think we should ask our future guests? <gasps> okay, go ahead. I would say, uh, when you look at your butthole in the mirror, what's the worst thing you see? <laughs> I, 
Why can't you ask that? Uh, I never look at my butthole in the mirror. You've never had your whole life? I think it would be hard to see it. Why? Well, the mirror, would. where do you have to stand up on a... I don't like full-length mirrors, so maybe that's why. That's why. Because in the bathroom mirror to see my butthole, I'd have to stand on a chair. Oh, right. You need like And then I'd probably fall. fall and then it was like... How'd you break your neck? Well, I was trying to look at my butthole. You're like, well, this drag queen come, Why came on the show and told me to look at my what ass. What are you looking for? Just when to you're see looking, it. Just to see Think it. about how much work your Why asshole you, does. Wouldn't it be easier to just take a selfie with, put your phone down around oh, your butt true. and take a picture and then look at it? Yeah, I guess. Okay, Priyanka. This is great. You're amazing. Can you? Um, can we take a selfie for, or something? Not a butthole self, selfie. Like, we'll minute. do that later. Do you have a wrap up to say, or does the interview just abruptly um, ends? Priyanka, thank you yeah, I wanna... for being on the best episode <gasps> of the worst, worst podcast. Yeah. That was the worst podcast, a production of Double Double Podcasts from Canada Land. If you want to listen to every episode of this show ad free, become a Canada Land supporter. Not only will you be helping us ensure we can continue making more of this show and others but you'll get an extra exclusive episode of this show each week where me and Katie will do a debrief of the interview. I didn't know that they would be bonus episodes. I don't think anybody knew. But the debrief was always my favorite part of the show. So become a supporter and you can get those bonus episodes. You can listen to this podcast ad-free on Amazon Music, included with Prime. Okay, 